Greetings, my acolytes and students of the Force, and welcome back to the Embrace of Knowledge our archives provide here on the channel. I have been expecting you. During the time of the old Sith Wars and the Great Galactic War, we all know the story of Darth Vitiate, also known as Tenebrae. Darth Vitiate was the reigning Sith Emperor that ruled for 1,400 years, ruling for over a millennia and living for four centuries longer. Darth Vitiate is obviously the longest living Sith Lord in his corporeal form in all of Star Wars lore, legends and canon included. However, did you ever hear or unveil the holocrons and recover the distant and lost manuscripts of a third empire that was constructed during the time of these wars? The Eternal Empire seemingly came out of nowhere, emerging from the depths of wild space and carving a path of destruction right in the centre of the Jedi and Sith, abolishing both orders, decimating them with the power and ferocity that it commanded the ferocity that was led by Valkorion. Now, Valkorion is a very unique entity, being more powerful than Vitiate, who was the current reigning Dark Lord of the Sith and Sith Emperor. It is sort of important to note that Valkorion was Vitiate, just in a reanimated corpse and body who he had dominated, using his power of will domination, an ability that he possessed more mastery of than any other being in all of Star Wars history. But what was the secrets that hid, be hid behind the cryptic veil that was laced by the Eternal Empire? What was the infrastructure that it created? And how did it affect the galaxy, overthrowing both the Jedi and the Sith Orders in mere days after carving and forging its path of destruction through the galaxy? Before we begin, Acolytes, and delve into the stories of legends and uncover the lost truths of Valkorion and the lies of the Eternal Empire, I would like to note that many of the beings and starships that dock at our dock hangar bays have not yet ascended to the rank of Master. This greatly infuriates Valkorion, who shall use the Force to bend time and space to his will if you do not ascend to the rank of Master by striking down the subscribe button and force crushing the like button in order to be notified for all your latest videos. With that out of the way, Acolyte, and Valkorion's anger tamed, let us begin. How is this possible? A second empire? Even to you couldn't have built all this. There must be another explanation. You presume limits to my power. There are none. The Outlander and Valkorion, two of the most important beings during the Eternal Empire's reign, Sometime between the ritual of Mathema, the ritual that was condemned and named the most important and complex Sith ritual ever conducted in all of Sith alchemist history and magician's history, conducted by Emperor Vitiate on his homeworld, stripping 8,000 Sith Lords of their free will and ripping the life force and force energy from Mathema. Sometime between this event and the Great Galactic War, which saw Sith like Darth Malgus, Darth Angrel, and Lord Adras rise to prominence as they waged an apocalyptic war against the Jedi, Vitiate, the current reigning Sith Emperor, travelled into the other reaches of wild space in search of the Eternal Fleet, a supposedly unstoppable and unbreakable fleet of warships commanded by sentient droids created many thousands of years ago. His journey brought him to the distant and forgotten planet of Zakul, where he discovered a culture of superstitious humans who worshipped the ruthless old gods and deities, taking on the identity of Valkorion, who he had dominated using his power of will domination and utterly and completely dominating and acting as a heroic figure to the rest of the galaxy and the people of Zakul. Valkorion adopted this form in order to not be ter terrified all the subjects he was going to rule over. He unified the nomadic tribes of Zakul into a civilization utterly devoted to him and his eternal power, creating what would to be known as the Eternal Empire, installing himself as the immortal emperor of Zakul. He formed a new force user organization called the Knights of Zakul to serve as his special forces and elite Praetorian guards, similar to the Roid Guard and Royal Guards that Palpatine used, and the Praetorian Guards that we see fighting Rey and Kylo Ren in Disney Canon's The Last Jedi. A subgroup of knights called Scions used their visions to locate the Eternal Fleet 
and enslaved the sentient Gemini droids to his eternal throne, binding their will to him. The Eternal Empire remained hidden until the Galactic War, when Valkorion's twin sons, Arcan and Thexan, who both possessed a connection to the Force that was rivaled only by Valkorion, Anakin Skywalker, and his twin children, Luke and Leia Skywalker, proposed a preemptive strike against the greater galaxy to test the strength, ferocity, and willpower of both the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire, who had been at war for many hundreds of years. Valkorion sanctioned their proposal, but commanded that only Thexan would lead their forces. Arkan disobeyed his father's orders and joined his brother on the front lines, showing his ferocity, resulting in him being wounded in action on the Korriban, the ancient Sith holy world where the Dark Jedi exiles had hailed from many years prior in 7000 BBY. When the twin princes returned to Zakul to present their trophies, the fallen lightsabers of both Jedi and Sith warriors, Valkorion merely turned his back on them, embracing the dark side to its fullest extent, allowing it to flow th- and funnel through him. Arkan lunged to attack his father and decapitate him with his yellow-bladed lightsaber, only to be restrained by his twin brother and childhood best friend Thexan, resulting in Arkan accidentally, in his blind rage and corruption of the dark side, accidentally killing his twin. Thexan's death was then covered up and publicly blamed as a casualty in the Core Worlds campaign, a campaign that saw Valkorion, Tharkan and Exxon invading the Core Worlds. When the Outlander, an immensely powerful and potent Force-sensitive entity, and Darth Maul, a Dark Council member that had held on to his position for 40 years since his mid-20s, now in his late 60s, Darth Maul was considered to be one of the most vicious and rival Sith Lords to Darth Vitiate, considered to be the most powerful Sith Lord, along with Darth Malgus and a few other notable Dark Lords that Vitiate saw as a threat to his rule. After the two Dark Beings were captured by Arkan after a major battle in which Darth Maul's ship was destroyed and decimated, the Emperor required to have a talk with them. Both the Outlander and Maul knew Valkorion's true identity and that the Sith Emperor Vitiate had inhabited this form in order to grow and expand his eternal empire and Zakul was poised to become the greatest civilization in the galaxy. Who, whom they had been searching for, the Sith Emperor, and come across Valkorion. Valkorion stated that he would share his eternal empire and the power that the eternal throne commanded with them, and they would only kneel and pledge himself to his immense power. Ma replied that he would never again kneel to the likes of Valkorion. Ma was then executed by Valkorion after he reducted and stole a saber star from one of the Knights of Zakul using a barrage of force lightning that utterly eviscerated and knocked the life out of the Dark Council member once and for all. The Outlander was given the same choice to kneel before Valkorion and change the galaxy into his liking, an opportunity that almost no one else had ever received. Arkan betrayed his father in hatred and Valkorion was then killed. Arkan claimed himself to be the new Emperor of the Eternal Empire and froze the Outlander in Carbonite upon realising that his father's spirit, Valkorion and Vitiate, had encased itself within the Outlander. Arkan used his father's own death to wage a conquest of the four core world that would see the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire combined on the losing end of the Eternal Throne's immense and unmatched technological ma- might. With the favouring ambush tactics and their massive technological superiority and the Knights of Zakul to destroy the bulk of both sides' fleets all within a matter of months that left the Sith and the Jedi virtually unassailable, with the Eternal Empire being unassailable to nearly any foe. At the end of the first year, the capitals of the both worlds, the Republic being Coruscant and the Sith Empire's capital being Droman Cast, were blockaded. Only ships outfitted with the element isotope fire were capable of outrunning them, but could never truly compete. After a year of conflict, the governments of the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire, represented by Senator Evran and Dark Darth Rovran, had formed treaties and agreeing to arm limitations and pay tribute to the Eternal Empire, making it the sole superpower in the galaxy. 
after massive battle stations known as star fortresses were placed and established in orbit of certain planets in the galaxy in order to keep rebellions from forming and to ensure that the reputations of both governments were paid. The fortresses are under the command of Exarchs, biologically and cybernetically enhanced knights of Zakul, who had remained loyal to Emperor Arcan and Emperor Valkorion. But as the galaxy suffered under the torment of the Eternal Empire, the Eternal Empire also did, in ways that many did not wish to see. Arcan's rule had become oppressive and cruel, with his sister Valen, who possessed an immensely powerful connection to the Force, that was now untethered and no longer restrained by her father, causing death and destruction in her way, as her power and the Force continued to exceedingly grow rapidly, like the two currents of a flowing river. In the year 3631 BBY, Lana Benico and Koth Vortina feed the Outlander from Carbonite imprisonment, acquired an ancient ship that was once part of the Eternal Fleet called the Gravestone, and created an alliance named the Eternal Alliance determined to destroy the Eternal Throne. Arcan, in turn, resorted to using all the resources of the Eternal Empire to hunt down and destroy this immense threat to his power. In the wake of the Alliance's formation, many operational objectives were carried out, foremost bringing the destruction of the Star Fortresses around potential ally worlds, such as Alderaan, Voss, and Bothawai, that had kept them from getting in contact, as a result of them being lost. These operations and missions carried out were in the intention of disobeying and disregarding the oppressive rule of Arcan and the Eternal Empire. They would see that several major worlds make contact with the Alliance against the Eternal Throne's oppressive mind and join in the war effort to restore the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire back to their past immeasurable power before the Eternal Empire's resurgence. Sometime later, a contact and potential ally would present itself in the form of the anarchist known as Firebrand, who had been bombing minor targets on Zakul for the past two years, without being caught by the elite Knights of Zakul and Sky Troopers to make contact with this anarchist. The Lady of Sorrows offered high yield explosives, which would see the Outlander making contact with the being in question, revealed to be Kalo Dinjaris. Due to this, the Outlander stealing her thunder, a plan was devised to take down all the droids in the Spire. This attack was to make the Zakulian populace, who had become reliant on droid labour for menial yet important tasks in the wake of the Eternal Fleet's attack, to take stock of their situation and wake them up from their peaceful lives. As a result, the Overwatch facility, where all the commands for the droids and even Sky Troopers came from, was destroyed the systems down, the droids stopped working, at least for a short and brief period of time. But an added bonus was gaining the Spire schematics, which detailed the infrastructure that would be for a usable attack and eventual assault on the Spire in order to remove Arcan from his immeasurable seat of power. The new Emperor would use this event as an excuse for the destruction of five worlds that happened earlier in his search for the Alliance and the Outlander. After the journey with Firebrand, Theron Shan used his resources to contact the Galactic Republic, finding out that the Elite Havoc Squad would be conducting authorised raids on Zakul beneath the notice of the Senate and other higher-ups within the Republic military. A meeting was set between them, himself and the Outlander, to recruit the squad in joining the Alliance's forces that met within the end of the swamp, where they discovered that Arik Jorgen was now in command of the squad, and not Jace Malcolm. Unfortunately, their land did not go unnoticed on Zakul, and a probe trapped their location until Jorgen was shutting it down, forcing the squad to split up in different directions in order to return to the camp without the unit becoming compromised should have they been captured. The Outlander and Jorgen would find a vantage point in order to cover the retreat, as they spoke about the events of the last five years, the situation on Zakul, and even about Arkan's oppressive mind. This continued until only Jorgen discovered the Zakulian exiles, people who doubted Arkan's policies and actions, who were subsequently left in the swamp to die, being chased by sky troopers, and their homes were being burned down to crack down on negative actions against the Eternal Empire and the Eternal Throne. This would later be a folly, for during an attack on the Night of Zakul outpost, the contained a planet-wide com relay, the Outlander, Theron, and Havoc's World were pinned down by a sky trooper reinforcement. Once their objective was achieved, 
the situation was looking grim. And there was a coolie in exiles destroyed a transport shuttle that was ferrying in additional sky troopers and blew up the squad that had pinned them down using thermal detonators, depending on the Outlander's choice. The Zakulian exiles would either begin training with Havoc Squad to become guerrilla fighters or would fight on their own, no longer dependent on the Sky Troopers to defend themselves. Well, Acolytes, I should confess now that this is going to be a two-part video with this in stating part one and the following part, which I'll upload in the next week, being part two due to the fact that many of my videos have been growing 20 to 40 minutes long and due to the fact that many of you who watch my videos and embrace the knowledge that our archives provide are a younger audience, do not have the time to sit down and watch 40 minute and 20 minute long video videos every single day that I release them. So I'm going to start splitting my longer videos unless I have law compilation in the title into two parts, with this being the first example of this initiative. The Eternal Empire Saga will continue, I assure you, and I am working on the video as you watch this, and will release it sometime in the next week. With that out of the way, I hope you have ascended to the rank of Master. Goodbye, Acolytes, and I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away.